Yeah, uh, hi again. So now we're looking going to look at part three of the, the work that was done on this model. First bit actually was to uh, sort out the electrics for the motor and the uh, rudder system, the radio control system. I took out the speed controllers, the old ones, uh, because they were twin speed controllers and I actually managed to buy a new one that had twin outlets so that there was control from one place. Um, that made life a lot, lot easier and, and also the wiring much simpler. The, uh, so that, that was basically it. I put in the receiver and uh, bought a new transmitter, for a four channel transmitter. Then it was, let's have a look at doing the lighting. The problem was that a lot of bulbs were blown a lot of wiring was very, very complicated. So I had to, first of all, put in new bulbs, which of course had their own lighting and had to be put into the, into the circuit. I decided that I wanted to have the lights on when the, when the ship was uh, on display. Now, now as, it, as it was using power from the main battery, I had to take it separate from that and through a special switch. So I now have a switch purely for the lights with a separate switch to power up the uh, radio control and the motors. So that's, that's made that a lot simpler. As I say, when it stood on display, it looks quite pretty. Um, the different colours in lights you can see, I did just by tinting the, the perspex for the windows because I thought that down below the, the, the windows would tend to be blued in a little bit because that would have been basically the engine room. As you can see there on the starboard side you have the green light, the, the navigation light and there on the port side though it actually looks white because it's full on on the picture that actually is the red port light. You want, one passes ships on the starboard side and must not pass on the port side. We decided to put her in the water and see how she looked with the lights on and also to, we had the chance to test the motors and the radio system which all seemed to work very very simply very well so uh, there we go we can she can now sail at night and look pretty much like the real thing. As you can see on the front there there are three harbour lights on the main mast. Those I had to put on separately. They, they were not, there was no wiring for those so I had to completely rewire to that. Um, also, as I said, it uh, was then made ready for the next big job, which was this thing you can see now on this picture, the, the hole in the bow. That's a thing that the model, as I got it, didn't have, but the real ship does have it's called a bow thruster and what it does it can turn the ship around in its own length because it has a propeller inboard at 90 degrees so when the propeller runs forward or backwards it's got it actually pushes the ship left or right so uh, that I'm going to show you the work that was involved with that this was the part that really frightened me to death when I realized I was going to have to do it and in fact, I had to do it in a rather strange way, but I'll show you that in part four. So uh, thanks for watching part three and uh, I'll talk to you again.